On this week's episode of the Ritual Misery podcast, we're going to talk about a brewery opening. Oh, yeah? Uh, did they have to negotiate some contracts? Uh, only for Halloween prep. Oh, well, that's one of the things that you do in the Shadow of the Moon. Uh, yeah, and uh, speaking of jokers, we have one on the show. W. Scott S. One. Hi. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 231 for Thursday, the 17th of October, 2019. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, we don't matter. Debbie Scott is one is with us tonight. How are you? Hi, I'm doing good. Hey, it's about time you come on this show. Yeah, jerk. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> it's like three it's long, years. It's been a long time coming, for sure. <laughs> that's yeah, what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's jump right into it. Amos, uh, you're going to DC. What? Yeah. Uh, so this last week, my big thing that I did was renegotiate some contracts, uh, for, for my budding business. Um, I'll be making just a little bit more than I was before, although now it's kind of written and all, I wouldn't call it in stone, but it's at least more hearty of an agreement than it was before. Okay. Um, and as part of that, yeah. I'll be going to DC the week of, Veterans Day weekend. So from the 10th to the 16th, I think, I'll be in D.C. So any Diamond Clippers out there that want to meet up for beer, let me know. Right on, man. Yeah, dude. Lots of fun stuff planned for that week. Uh, I wish I could say more, but not publicly. Yeah. Well, speaking of <laughs> yeah, speaking of, of meetups, though, I had one last weekend with the Have a Drink crew. Well, half of the crew, yeah. anyway. Um, I was... Not on the show last week because I was in, or actually, this was, oh my gosh, almost two weeks ago now. Um, I was in Kentucky for a business thing, and uh, just a couple hours down the road from where I was staying, um, Casey from Have a Drink was opening his brewery. Yeah. Coincidentally. And uh, yeah, so I went and met him and Justin, a.k.a. Bob, and it was an absolute blast, man. It was great to see those guys. The beer is freaking awesome. Casey, Casey is an amazing brewer. And uh, it was great. Uh, there was a large crowd. There was a lot of, a lot of good buzz going on. I think they're, they're going to be quite successful there in, in Pikeville, Kentucky. Right across from a church. Yes, and right next door to another church. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's the way... Some, because that's the way that breweries work. That's how that's yeah. supposed to go. Yep. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I picked up some swag. I got some uh, some cool coasters. I got a t-shirt. Um, yeah. And uh, Amos, you'll have some of that swag here soon as well. There's some uh, in the mail. Hell yeah. You actually mailed it out. This is, okay, So you buried the lead. <laughs> okay. Two days in a row, Kent has mailed me something, one of which I've been waiting for for just about a year. And the <laughs> other one he he just got. So he's like he's pulling both. He's like, Yeah, I mailed it out like right after I got it. And the other one's like, Yeah, I mean I got to it. So Yeah. Well you told me a long time ago that uh yeah, don't worry about uh sending that out anytime soon. And I was like, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Took it to heart. <laughs> and then the Jackbox streaming bundle happened and I picked up all those Jackbox games and now the family wants to play them and I need my stream box. Nice, nice. My Steam box. Yeah. Steam that. box. So speaking of Jackbox games, uh, Willie, I think you're familiar with Jackbox. Wait, what? Huh? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a new a new game came out, yeah? Uh, yes. Jackbox yeah, is I... way different than Jack Socks. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, literally today, as we're recording this, uh, Jackbox Party Pack 6 just came out. And um, I've seen some of the uh, gameplay. I, I've not seen a whole bunch of it. Um, but uh, we're going to be doing an entire uh, stream f uh, with it tomorrow for game night. Uh, so you'll definitely want to uh, join us uh, tomorrow night because... Uh, it's a kind of tradition around here that we always do the new games twice. Um, and so, yeah, that should be a lot of fun. There's some, there's some good ones. Yeah, right on. That's um, uh, W. Scott is one on Twitch. That is correct. Yes. Hell yeah. Imagine that. Weird. Yeah. 
He didn't have to wait for the mass renaming to find his name. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Uh, so next week, I might be mobile, as in on my laptop, not in my studio, because my studio is being used as storage space as we reconfigure the house for a Halloween party. Uh-huh. Yeah. Been that probably mm. doing that again next weekend myself. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we, we we got a lot of crazy ideas. We got babies hanging from the ceiling with uh, uh, bloody spiders all over the place. And um, yeah, it's, it's. I don't know, we, we went all out two years ago. And this, this year, we're actually planning it a little ahead of time. So it should be even better. But there's fewer people, which will actually probably be better, too. <laughs> yeah. we're, doing a, we're doing a party this year based on Clue, based on the game and... Uh, movie mm-hmm. clue where we're gonna uh we're gonna be playing a game where you have to like throughout the night you gather clues and then you have to eventually find um find the weapons in certain rooms and things like that so it's gonna be kind of like um just like the game with where you got like the little logic puzzle um uh game board basically and mm-hmm. uh yeah it should be should be pretty cool now did you build a because I'm, I'm thinking about the layout of your house so isaac's room would be opposite the garage. Did you build a tunnel going from one to the other so you can kind of sneak through the back way? And then another one from uh, from Lucas's room into your bedroom? <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, we use actually teleporters. We, we, uh, oh, okay. Tunneling, tunneling was going to cost too much, so we just uh, we, we made a teleporter. Yeah. Or, I mean, you could have done it yourself. It wouldn't have been that expensive. Just get some plastic spoons in about 45 years. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could have. Didn't yeah. feel like it. Not so I mean, much. it takes me a year to mail things. I'm not going <laughs> to. I mean, that is valid. <laughs> Willie, uh, are, are you much of a Halloween guy? Do you do anything special? You go trick-or-treating? Uh, not really. I mean, I know um, uh, the uh, village that I'm in here, uh, that I'm living in here, apparently uh, they 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 can, they tend to do some uh, trick-or-treating, the kids do. But other than that, it's pretty uneventful around here but i mean i i, I definitely have gone to uh <laughs> i mean the last i mean the last halloween party i was at was when i was a kid like a couple years ago so i mean it's, it's been a while but yeah i mean i don't really tend to do to anything real special for halloween but i always enjoy it it's it's a fun time J- just to clarify willie is 15 years old <laughs> <laughs> He he had his birthday already. He's sixteen. Oh oh, my bad, my bad. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so uh, yeah. trick or treating around here is always stupid because it's always so cold that everybody has to wear coats, which basically hide your Halloween costume. And then you've got some people that buy the Halloween costumes that work really well for for the cold, and they're all just big puffy marshmallow looking things, like the the fattest <laughs> vampire you you've ever seen, and. You know, like somebody goes to the Snickers bar, it looks more like a mounds. Um, it's, yeah. it's, it's awful. T- uh, TS and uh, TC, nah, t- yeah, Sam in the chat <laughs> says um, Halloween is when cosplay doesn't scare the straights. Uh, <laughs> yeah. mm. That's pretty uh, Will, good. W- he makes a good last, point. What's the last costume that you wore? What's the last time like you, you dressed up for Halloween and what was it? For me, it was two years ago. I went as a monk. <laughs> a monk. Mm-hmm. And Will, what about you? I uh, <laughs> I actually, a couple of years ago, uh, dressed up as uh, Steve Jobs. I got a black turtleneck and everything. And uh, and I had, uh, I had the long hair um, at the time when I did it. And, uh, and so it kind of looked like 1980s, 1990s Steve Jobs. But uh, but yeah, I had the black turtleneck, the blue jeans, everything, and it was great. And I didn't have to put much effort into it, which was which was how I like it. Nice. <laughs> this year, this year I'm going as Heisenberg, uh, since since Clue is our theme. Hmm. Uh, they wanted um, so Steph and um, uh, one of her friends are the ones like the the ones really planning this thing, and they were trying to get a lot of people to to dress up as Clue characters, and so I was like, Mister White, I could be Mister White. So I'm gonna be Heisenberg. Of course, you would be Mr. White. <laughs> so Walter White, uh, obviously from uh, Breaking Bad. Um, 
Yeah, but the yeah. one of the funnest things that I dressed up as uh, recently, this was a couple years ago, I dressed as the Joker and um, did the, oh. the green hair dye and like everything. It was it was freaking it was creepy. How, how long did how long did the makeup take on that? Probably mm, probably 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, really? OK. Well, yeah. J- Joker makeup isn't bad. You just have to piss off your girlfriend and get, hand her a bunch of makeup. And she just slaps the shit on, makes it hurt. <laughs> and that's yeah. I mean, there's no there's no finesse to it. If you're doing it right, unless you're doing like the uh, the 1950s Joker, that's different. Oh, no, no, no. Or a 60s Definitely. Joker, but but if you're doing like uh, the Heath Ledger Joker, you just smear some shit that's, on, call it a day. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going for. It was it was very um, very uh, rough, I guess. Uh, yeah, especially the mouth, like it was kind of just. Shit. I mean, it makes sense though, because it's like if you're going out, if you're going out. I know um, a couple years ago um, when we were uh, we just did some. Uh, they had like uh, a trick or treating for us um, at the time, and uh, I it was raining outside, and so it's like it's one of those things where it's like you don't want to put too much effort in, otherwise <laughs> you could melt away, you know? Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I um, the kids keep asking me what I'm going to go as this year, and I keep telling them I'm just going to go as a as a, 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 a as a as a flasher, and they keep telling me that I can't. Oh. Mm. Yeah, that could be problematic. Yeah. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem with it because I don't have to see it. Plus, with, think you know. think about how quick the guests will leave when it's time to go home for the night. Yeah, just change costumes like midway. Like when you're like, okay, I'm kind of tired of these people. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> just come down butt naked. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Birthday suit time. <laughs> it's that time. I'd invite to the hot tub, but we ain't got one, so we're just gonna sit around the living room butt naked. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna play a game called Wind Our Clocks. <laughs> <laughs> After midnight, don't count. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wait, did I say clocks? <laughs> uh, speaking of the Joker, you went to see the Joker this weekend, huh? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, the new Joker movie. How'd uh, that go? Phoenix uh that movie is amazing it is uh, it is it's the best acting you've ever seen from Joaquin Phoenix I mean it and it was it's brilliantly directed it's engaging it's compelling it's it's very severely acted uh if you catch my meaning like it's very it's very in your face um this is not a movie and I and I feel like I'm echoing like everybody I've heard talk about this, uh, but it is not a movie that you walk away feeling good about. You know, like we, when you go see Avengers or something like that, you leave the theater just all pumped up, like fuck yeah, that was a great fucking movie. God damn, I want to see it again. No, you leave Joker like, oh my god, that just fucking happened. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, I mean, just as far as quality, like objective quality. Ama- like wonderful, amazing, amazing movie. Um, but every it's one of those movies where you will take away from this movie kind of what you bring with you. I think uh, because everybody's going to have their own take. And like, you know, I heard it's it's pretty it. political without being political. Uh, I mean, if that's what you bring with you, yeah, then that's what you'll get from it. I think. Um, but if you're not thinking politics, really, it's you know, I don't know. I mean, if you have. Uh, I don't know if you have a particular trauma that that uh, troubles you, uh, you know, give you some you know psychological um, um, you know issues or whatever. I think you'll get like you'll see that in the movie. Hmm. If you have a, hmm. a dark dark sense of humor and you go to the movie, you're gonna probably laugh at inappropriate times. <laughs> in the movie. You know, it's, it's really one of those those like it, it's going to be a different experience for every single person. I think that sees it. I will just say that right now, if you're not thinking politics, where the fuck are you at? Um, I watched a movie last night on a recommendation of my wife. She said, this is a movie you would really like. You should watch it. And she showed me the trailer, and I was like, yeah, it looks interesting. Okay, cool. So I went downstairs to my office, and while I was waiting for some emails to come in, I went ahead and watched it. And I got to say, she was right. Thumbs up for In the Shadow of the Moon. It's a Netflix original it's got a bunch of people I've never heard of, and it's a good fucking movie. Nice. 
Yeah. So totally check it out. It's worth, it's an hour and 55 minutes, which actually ends up being about an hour 48 with credits. It's pretty good. Don't think about it too hard. Like once you figure out the, the, the way, the way the movie's going, don't put too much more thought into it because the whole movie breaks down. If you start, it's a, there's some quantum or some, uh, not quantum, uh, some, some chrono issues to it. If you dig too deep, such as any movie with, with, uh, with, that tries to mess with timelines. So oh, I, this, this is like a cop movie, right? Like a serial killer. Something. That's how it's presented, but that's not what it becomes. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Which is the, really the, the, the amazing part of it. And it's gotten a nice little twist at the end that if you're really paying attention, you already know, but it'd be super easy to like, I, I kind of half uh, saw it and I was like, Oh, oh that'd be an interesting little thing, little twist. And then it, then that's what happened. But if I hadn't noticed like one word, then I wouldn't have caught the twist. So there's it's, it's got multiple levels and it can lead to some decent conversations. So go go check out In the Shadow of the Moon on Netflix. It's it's pretty good. Yeah, it says it's a crime mystery sci fi. It's so, yeah, awesome. It's not, but that's how it presents. <laughs> okay. It, it it starts out as that, but it's quickly not that about 15, 20 minutes into the movie, it's not that anymore. Okay. It it starts going off on its own little way, and I thought if if you liked Looper, you'll love this. If you hated Looper, you might still be able to under, be able to get into this. Like it's that kind of movie. I see. Uh, Will, have you seen any cool movies lately? Have I seen what? Sorry. Any cool movies lately? Uh honestly, not really. I I have not had any real time to do any like content watching myself. I mean, honestly, just because I've been doing a lot of content myself to be perfectly honest. And mm. so it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you know, I, uh, I don't know. I just, I barely have time to watch anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of movies, I wonder what big voice Jay has to say to us this week. Welcome to your blue league movie draft minute presented by diamond club TV for the week of October 14th, 2019. I'm your host, big voice Jay. Math tip, take the circumference of your jack-o'-lantern, yes, you have one, and divide it by its diameter. The result? Pumpkin pie. Let's go to the scoreboard. Teams have a drink and golf are all tied for last place. Still waiting for their first film. Team's No Shoe gets 384000 from Parasite. And fourth place, Team RMP gets $3.9 million from Jexy. And third place, Team Geek Girls gets second place thanks to Adam's Family and Gemini Man, totaling $63.3 million. And in first place, with $208.9 million, it's Team DKG. That's your Stream Team Movie Draft Minute. For up-to-date listings, follow Stream Team Draft on Twitter. Dude. Okay, first of all, I got to point out, Snowshoe has $384,000. Thousand. Uh, God damn. I, I, here's the thing. With that movie, I expected it to not do that great. I did not expect it to do that horrible. Like, God. Not even half a million dollars. Holy crap. Oh, um, my God. Uh, Joker's going to kill us, dude. Like DKG might, uh, they might squeak this one out. Yeah. Joker is way overperforming. Yeah. So what, what, what is your guys's, uh, slate, um, in the draft? Star Wars and some other stuff. Yeah. We got Star Uh, Wars, Jexy and, uh, Bombshell. Okay. No, I, I mean, Star Wars always makes good money though. So I don't know. I, I, if, if honestly though, like I think Frozen's going to be the one to watch out for, honestly, more than Joker, realistically, but I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, have a drink has Frozen. So uh, everybody got a decent slate, I think, in the, um, uh, in the blue division. Yeah. The people that didn't yeah. get any of the big names got a lot of little ones. So, yeah. 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 Mm hmm. No, I, uh, yeah, we had, um, uh, we got Terminator, uh, Jumanji, I think is going to do great for us, uh, for team game night. Um, the Adams family, like, honestly, for the amount that I paid for it, I, it's pretty good. I mean, I paid, um, how much did I, did we end up paying for that? Actually, 
we paid like 14 game dollars with it, which for, for Adam's family, which was, which is not the greatest, but so here's the thing yeah. about the Adam's family. I don't want to buy Adam's family merch. I don't want to read Adam's family books or comics or anything, but the Adams family comes on TV like I'm flipping through channels or if I'm just happen to see some shit on YouTube, I'm watching it start to finish. And if it, hmm. if it auto plays another one, I'm watching that one too. <laughs> like I love the Adams family, especially the old ones. The, the Oh my gosh, those are they're so stupid and they're so funny. <laughs> um yeah. But I'm not going to go out of my way to get to it. Like I've seen yeah. every Adams family movie there that's been out. But I've always, I've caught every one of them on video, mm, and mm-hmm. some of them years after the fact. I mean, I, the the way I was going into it with that was because because Frozen Two doesn't come out until um you know Thanksgiving time, and so I was hoping that you know it would be like a a good animated movie, um to fill that gap until Frozen comes out. But uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to. Lot to see about it, but um, but hey, at least it's putting me uh, in second place still. I mean, Geek IO um got twenty six million from Gemini Man, so so I mean, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. But Geek IO Man has like a bunch of movies, so I'm I'm actually pretty um I, I actually think they're gonna do really great, honestly. Nice. Yeah, they got like right. nine movies, I think. <clears throat> yeah, no, it was ridiculous. Same. Hey, uh, if you want to do really well, you can't do any better than stopping by patreon.com slash ritual misery. Hell yeah, man. Get over there and uh, get in on the pre-show goodness, the post-show goodness, exclusive interviews, all kinds of uh, just crazy stuff you wouldn't expect uh, mm-hmm. will be in there. And um, yeah. Uh, Don't forget the treasure box. They can see us uh, airplay uh, some Metallica from 1996. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Will, were you born yet? Uh, what year is it? 96? <laughs> uh, 23 I, years ago? Yeah. I, uh, I might have, uh, I, I, I might have been around, but, uh, not, not around to, uh, understand it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> he wasn't um, yet listening yeah. to Metallica. That's what he's saying. But yeah, get yeah. over to patreon.com slash ritual misery and you can see uh, a couple of old men doing things when they were young men. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, show us that you you give a fuck by giving us a buck over at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah, and if nothing else, even if you don't like this show, just give us a little money on there to fuck my taxes up a little bit further because that's what it's doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, honestly, same here. <laughs> right because once you cross once you cross six hundred dollars you have to claim it and then and it, it just it's it's just not fun after that yep mm-hmm. <laughs> but it does help get me to south by and uh get kent to south by and we're thankful for that because that damn hotel we or the uh the airbnb v- venmo or whatever we got vrbo was expensive so <laughs> but we'll be at south by the Venmo B and B, the Venmo B, yeah, whatever. <laughs> like, I I got to make it to South by one of these times. I got to. Yeah, 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 no, it's like we didn't go this year, and as soon as we didn't go, me and Kim were like, <sighs> "Yeah, that was a mistake." <laughs> yeah, we should have gone. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. We, um, what four four years four. Four or five years in a row, I think we went. We went four years in a row. This would have been our fifth year in a row, and we didn't go. So next year will be our fifth year. Yeah, yeah. It'll be my sixth overall year because I went like a long time ago before Diamond Club was even a thing. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Yep. yep. Anyway, uh, what, what's next, Kent? It looks like we got some uh, some games to play here. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess you can play you can play a sounder. Uh, it's not exactly accurate but we like the sound so we're going to play it anyway we like big voice too. Your attention. Big voice. in the last 30 minutes kids done something now you've got a guess he was very excited kids games play with him play with him 
Yeah, Kent. So this is normally this is normally where I would put you guys through a game. However, I'm not going to do that this week. Yeah, Kent, play with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do we got this week, Will? All right. So, yeah, I actually uh, came up with a game here. And uh, you guys uh, you guys may have heard of this video game called Fortnite, right? It's on oh, episode, right. like, 15 now, right? Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> I, I played Fortnite, like, twice when it first, um, like, when it first came out. Uh, the Battle Royal. Uh, mm-hmm version because that's apparently the only thing that anyone ever plays oh um, yeah mm-hmm. uh yep i died real quick both times and uh, i was done with that <laughs> i mean uh, here's the thing though they have introduced uh skill-based matchmaking now so i mean if you jump if you were to jump back in now you know i mean i uh, we, we we it definitely has helped uh because that was the problem we were running into is because the problem with Fortnite beforehand was there was just what we call sweats, which are basically people like try harding very hard at the game. And um, and ever since they introduced skill based matchmaking, it has made a major difference. So hey. I, I've i never played. I will never played and not worried about it. <laughs> but well, it, it's going to prove my downfall in this game we have here tonight. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to be uh, testing your knowledge on uh, Fortnite items. Now, this is uh, very important. It's Fortnite items, not guns, because guns would be easy because you got your assault rifle, you know, shotgun, SMG. Those are easy. What we're going to do is we're, I'm going to be quizzing you on some Fortnite items. Uh, so if you can uh, correctly identify it, we're just going to go with um, you're going to say if it's real or fake and uh, you get a point if you're right. Okay. Oh, all right. All right. So, uh, so let's see. Our uh, our first uh, item here is a. I know we were. Uh, I know this. We're we were gonna do more than guns, but this is a special one. Net gun. Now, is this for? Who is this for? Uh, do you want me to? I can give you a description. If do you want it? No, no. I mean, is it is it Amos answering or me answering or are we on a uh, team? Both of you. Oh yeah, both of you guys. Uh, so yeah, you, both of you give me an answer. Oh, I see. Okay. Net gun. Mm-hmm. That sounds real. Um, yeah, I, I feel like that's real. All right. You both say it is real, and you are... If I can get the sounder... No, that is not right. That is fake. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so off to a good start already. Definitely. <laughs> oh my God. I hope we, Amos, so, I hope uh, we get... <laughs> so, uh, how many, uh, uh, do we want to do? I have, uh, I have, a, I have a, a lot here, but I can, I, I can stop at any point here as far as let's, numbers let's, here. let's go to, to, until one of us gets to five, five. Yeah, All right. We'll, we'll play first to five. First mm. to five. All right. You got it. All right. The next item, balloons. Balloons. Um, Just balloons. I, I, mm, I think it's real. You think it's real? All right. Mm, I'm going to say Amos? it's fake. You're going to say it's fake. Yeah. Well. All right. So Kent says real. Amos says fake. All right. Kent, your answer of real is correct. Yes. All right. It's because you so, suck. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that puts uh, Kent at one, Amos at zero. All right. Tornado bomb. I'm gonna say real. That sounds like some real shit. That sounds like something that uh that that's yeah. All right. Uh, Amos says real. Tornado bomb. That sounds fake. To me, I, I don't. I don't think there's a tornado bomb. All right, Amos says real. Kent says fake. All right, Amos's answer of real is. Yes. All right, so Kent's on a roll here. Uh, two back to back here. All right, gotta gotta step it up, Amos. Come on. <laughs> All right, 
chiller grenades. Hmm. Chill. Chiller. Chiller grenades. It's yes. like a freeze bomb or something. I'm going to say that that's real. Okay. That say seems real. Legit. Yeah, that seems legit. I'll go real. All right. So you both it, are saying real. It's not grammatically correct, so therefore I think it's real. <laughs> <laughs> that's logic. All right. Well, you are both correct. That is a correct answer. There, I'm on the board. So. I don't have to work anymore. Please. <laughs> All right. So three to one. Uh, Ken and Amos. Ken has three. Amos is one. All right. Moon shoes. Hmm. Moon shoes. I'm going to say moon shoes are a thing. Yes. You're going to say real? Okay. Moon Ken? shoes, if, if it was a thing, I think it'd be kind of like anti-gravity kind of allows you to like jump really high, really far. So I'm going to say, I'm going to guess real. All right. So you both say real. All right. Your answers of real are <laughs> incorrect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will say though, uh, fun fact: uh, there are there is an item called Hop Rocks, which is similar. So it's not shoes, but it does. You can basically um, you you basic. It's a consumable, is what we call them, and so it allows you to just kind of hop around uh, a little faster. So it, it's kind of the same thing, but not exactly. This is why I won't play the game. <laughs> this is why I like the division. If I'm going to play a, a first person shooter game, it's the division because you can't jump. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. No, that, that jumpy, 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 jumpy shit to avoid getting shot. Fuck that. That's mm-hmm. stupid. That annoys a piss. <laughs> like get the hell. No. Uh, as soon as I see the ability to repeatedly jump without any sense of fatigue in a game, Done. Over. I'm not playing. They it. do have. Uh, there is jump fatigue in Fortnite, though. So, um, so you know, there is. Uh, there's you know, a, there's it, also you can... there's also fabricating walls out of thin air using um, flying in wood from nowhere. <laughs> so no, I just uh, no. Fair point. Fair point. All <laughs> right. So we are still at three one. All right. Yeah, Kent. What you gonna do with your one? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Airborne Anvil. Airborne Anvil. Okay, can't it's here go. Airborne Anvil. Sounds like some Roadrunner yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what <laughs> I was gonna it's, it's, it's got a yeah, it's got an acme stamp on the side. Yeah, yeah. I I like that. If it's not real, I hope it is. So I say it's real. All right. Ken says real. What about I gotta, you? Amos? I gotta play catch up. I'm gonna say it's fake. You're gonna say fake. All right. All right, Kent, your answer of real is... Oh, wait, wait. (laughs) Uh, Amos did game theory, and it worked. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So let's see here. That puts uh, Amos one there. All right, so three, two. Kent has three, Amos has two. All right, wall dynamo, and this is a trap. Wall, wall dynamo. dynamo. Mm. Wall dynamo. Again, the grammar is bad, so I think it's real. <laughs> <laughs> wall dynamo. So you said it's a trap. It sounds like it's a, it's an exploding wall. So it's probably like a you know you you think it's a regular wall and you go hide behind it and it ends up killing you. So yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a trap that you can place on the wall, and it's actually an electric trap. Uh huh. Uh huh. That sounds very specific. So I'm gonna say it's probably real. Well, correct. Yes, you are both correct. Yes. It is real. Although um, this item was uh, removed very quickly. Uh, I think it was only in the game for like maybe a couple weeks. Um, so not a whole lot of people got a chance to use it, but it is real. So it was only in the game for a couple weeks, kind of like my desire to watch this game. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So, uh, Kent has four, Amos has three. So if Kent gets this next one right, uh, then Kent wins the game. And it's Kent's choice first. 
All right. Yeah. So uh, Eye of the Storm Tracker. Ooh. Eye of the Storm Tracker. Can so it, I know can, Fortnite. Can you hear the, it in a sentence? Part of the game is uh, like a <laughs> storm because you're like like in the eye of a storm, right? So it's, and it's constantly right. shrinking. And so therefore the map shrinks and it brings the, like the opponents closer and closer together. Yeah. I, I can give you a, I can give you a description for it if you'd like. Um, uh, sure. All right. So it's a backpack, which allows you to see into the future. So the person who's wearing it can see two storm circles ahead instead of just the next one. Uh huh. I don't feel like that would be super useful, so I'm going to say it's fake. Okay. I I think that, uh, one, it sounds like it would be exceptionally useful because then you can start heading in that direction and I have to scramble to it at the very end. And two, Kent said it's fake, so I have to game theory my way to true. All right. <laughs> Going with game theory again. It, it does right. me no good to go with the same answer as him. All right. Did the game theory pay off? Kent, your answer of fake is... <laughs> so it did work out in your favor again, Avis. Good job. I should game theory more often. This is fun. <laughs> All right, so it's four to four, tied up. So this will decide the game. Mm. All right, the item is Hulk juice. True. Okay, that that was fast. I got a 50-50 right. shot. This sounds legit. Uh, Hulk juice. Hulk juice. I feel like Hulk might be owned by Disney, and they wouldn't allow uh, this game company to use it. I got to go with fake. All right. So Kent says fake. Amos says real. All right. And the person who has won the game is... Kent, you got it right. So you win the game. Yeah. Well done. Hell yeah. All right. Gotcha. All gotcha. right. <laughs> I, I thought Amos was going to uh, had a chance to pull pull that away, but uh, nope, not exactly. That was close, though. Good job. That that was a lot of fun. I um, I, I forget how because I, I'm usually the game master. I forget how fun it is to to be quizzed on something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, I knew that, uh, I knew that you guys, uh, weren't going to know this. So it's like, I thought it was a good chance cause it's like, you know, you could go one way or the other. So, so yeah. All right. Uh, Kent, it is now time for the next segment. Is it not? It is. Okay. So let's do this. You've got 60 seconds. Get your mind right. It's time for hot takes on the ritual misery podcast. This is a segment we used to do weekly with our guests and uh it wasn't super popular so we stopped doing it however there's there's one individual that this was his favorite segment of the I show was. <laughs> i love this yeah so since willie since you're on the show i figured why not bring it back for uh for a week at least and put All you right. through hot takes so for those that don't remember how it works I am going to give Will a topic, and he has about 10 seconds to give his hot take on it. So I'll say, you know, like, shoes or something, and then he's just going to rant and rave or, or whatever, whatever he wants to say about shoes until he hears the record scratch, and that'll be his signal to stop talking, and then I give him his next topic. There's five topics, so it's going to go about 60 seconds. Are you ready? All right. I think so. All right, Will. Jackbox games, am I right? Uh, it's a great experience, but I just wish that they could uh, fix their game from crashing sometimes. <laughs> turtle days, am I right? Ah, oh, turtle days. Such a fun experience and also traumatizing at the same time. Long shot, am I right? Ah, uh, long shot. 
I didn't go see it. And maybe that's probably why uh, it tanked. And uh, yeah, hashtag 63, never forget. <laughs> Needs more grease. Am I right? Needs more grease? Uh, uh, that movie, man, that movie, if it's what I, if it's what you're referring to that movie, (laughs) (laughs) the ritual misery podcast. Am I right? Ah, the ritual misery podcast. Um, what, wait, what's that again? (laughs) (laughs) Well done. Well done. Well done. (laughs) I, I I have to say that if anything needs more grease, it is the Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> There's your show title. Right. Oh, uh, shit. All right. So um, we usually use this as an opportunity to talk to our guests and find out what the hell they are up to, what they're doing, where they came from, how they got here, and why the hell are you on our show? So... <laughs> Um, I will start, uh, this being your first time on our show, a lot of us don't know a lot about you. You kind of came into the diamond club scene from behind the scenes and started helping out with this, helping out with that. And that caused a little bit of friction to begin with, but, uh, eventually you get smoothed out and you kind of proved your worth that you weren't just uh, jumping in and trying to, you know, be the, the, the jackass that ruins things that other people have been working for. Um, <laughs> So how did you find Diamond Club? What brought you in? And what do you do when you're not Diamond Clubbing? Well, so Diamond Club actually has uh, a really interesting, like I I have probably, I don't know if my story is unique or not, but I, I do think it is, you know, definitely a lot more special, I think. Um, so I, just to give some background, um, I have been um i mean i've been on the internet like all my life and and uh the but the crazy part about it is i actually my family had a dial up at the, at the house all the way believe it or not until 2010 <laughs> which is yeah i i know so like um i mean and, and it's one of those weird things where it's like <laughs> i could see amos is just yeah. <laughs> like, like at, at what point were you like hey they haven't come out with anything besides the 56k baud modem for like 20 years like I, eventually they're gonna update this hardware right <laughs> i here's the thing here's the thing my parents had the money not me so yeah that's <laughs> that's basically where that uh leads but uh, oh, Sam says I'm not alone. All right, well that's that's good to know. Now I um, I I so I'm gonna stop the show for a second because I <laughs> okay. I got I got to know is, is this Tucson Sam? Is it Tuscan C Sam? Is like, I like, it, it's TSCN Sam. I'm right. pretty sure. I'm but what what, but what is that? Uh, TSCN, um, and I don't think he would mind, uh, me explaining it for him. Uh, it's the name of his little network that he's made. It is, uh, the Samcast network. That's what it, um, is initial is. That explains it. Uh, not nearly as exciting as I was hoping to be, but at least now I know. Continue on with your story. (laughs) Yeah, no. (laughs) So, um, so my parents finally, uh, got, uh, cable in 2010 and uh and like for at the time it was like pretty revolutionary i'm pretty sure we had um i want to say we had 25 down five up but compared to the dial up of before it was like whoa it's like i can actually load a website and it loads under five seconds this is amazing i can actually watch youtube videos and not have to wait for them to buffer this is fantastic um (laughs) but um but yeah, so so that's how so just so a lot of the people that I think are into Diamond Club uh, kind of came from uh, the Twit podcasting network, and I and so did I. But the uh, difference for me is I didn't have cable TV, so I didn't grow up with tech TV and all the on all these other things. Um, and it was basically um, I basically kind of found Revision Three on YouTube because I was a tech geek and all that stuff. Um, so I was kind of, I was interested in technology like everyone else was. And, um, 
and that was the thing. So I, um, so I sort of found revision three on YouTube and, um, and, 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 you know, honestly, like if it wasn't for revision three, making the move to YouTube, you know, I might not have ha uh, found revision three. Um, so there was a lot of people, um, in the revision three network and, and a lot of the associates and whatnot. Web and chat says you were a baby when tech TV was around and, uh, I, and he's Wabbit, probably not Wabbit, wrong. And Wabbit was only 67 back then. <laughs> <laughs> That's also probably right. <laughs> Look, <Wabbit. laughs> yeah. But, um, so yeah, so I, um, so there so, was a, so uh, you went from cable modem to YouTube rev three to twit to night well to the NSFW show to night attack no actually so there's a funny story about that so it was actually uh Tom Merritt uh so it was Tom Merritt's um tech news today that kind of got me in the door because so the, the first Podfather. show yeah so the first show that I that I actually watched on Twitter and not a lot and I don't know if too many people remember this show but it was um it was after frame rate it was called This Week in YouTube. Uh, it was hosted by uh, Lamar Wilson and Chad Johnson. Mm. And that's how I got into Twit is Lamar Wilson promoted it on his YouTube channel because he's kind of in the circle of people at Revision 3 at the time and still is. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, he promoted the podcast. I was like, OK, I'm going to go check it out. So I actually knew who Chad Johnson was, and I was a fan of Chad Johnson before I was a fan of Brian Brushwood. Let that sink in for a second. Yeah, like, nice. That that's you know that's 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 pretty interesting. I think. Mm -hmm. um, Omg. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, so yeah, so I kind of uh, after watching this week in YouTube because that was the only show I was interested in at the time. So I never watched NSFW or. Um, frame rate or any of those other programs. But then I slowly started to get into twit and like this week in tech. And then I found tech news today, uh, which obviously Tom, Sarah and I as, and Jason did. And, um, <laughs> what was funny about that was I kind of discovered tech news today when it was kind of on its waning end, uh, or at least with Thomas host. Mm -hmm. um, so I probably started watching around October 2013 and Tom left his host like two months later. Um, and so eventually, um, you know, Tom uh, took his operation over to Daily Tech News Show. And so that's how I was, you know, into chat realm because they obviously use the same IRC at the time. And uh, yeah, it slowly uh, started getting more into core killers and night attack in early 2015. And here we are. Nice. All right. So now on Diamond Club TV and part of the Diamond Club group, you do game nights. Um, what the hell? Leave me alone. Why is my phone going off, jerks? Fuck you. <laughs> the, the, the entire city of Wasilla should know I'm streaming right now. <laughs> um, I'll root. I know. I know. Fucking. Why do you call? Just text. Don't call me. Text. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so right. you're gonna call me. Like, you better text me like five minutes prior. Be like, I'm calling you in a few minutes. <laughs> well, with you, it's like <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna exactly. call you tomorrow because you answer your texts so frequently. <laughs> you you answer your text texts about as often as I answer my Facebook. <laughs> well, I mean, you're not much better, <laughs> so. <laughs> but at least I read them. <laughs> I read them. I, yes, that... I read them in the preview. <laughs> I, I, open I read them on my watch yeah. and it counts as red and I'm like, okay, that was good enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely guilty of that. I, uh, I will read a message and I'll be like, it'll be one of those things where I'm like busy at the time. So it's like, I'll see your message, but then I'll like, okay, I'll respond to it a little later and then I never get back to it. And so I'm definitely guilty of that for sure. You, you want to know how not to get a hold of me though? Call? What? No, well, no. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I might answer then, but probably not. Discord, send me a message in Discord, and I will get back to you in about six months. <laughs> I, I used to be that way. I, I just, I, I still can't, I still can't wrap my head around Discord. Like, there's all, there's so much information there, but every time I go in there, it's just a, 
a smorgasbord of notifications that I don't fucking care about and I can't turn off. I can I can show you how to turn yeah. them off. Wabbit well, says I can testify to that. No shit, because Wabbit sent me a message and I, I literally didn't get back to him for like two months because I, <laughs> I never saw it. I was in Discord and I never saw it. Like that's I just the interface is exactly not what I want. I yep. mean, here's the thing: it's I I it's a lot better than Skype. Well, I mean. <sighs> That's not saying much. It's, yeah, I was gonna say, no. it's like saying that you yeah. know it's better than an internment camp. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are kind of stuck in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. Um Okay, so back back to you. Uh what else do you do on uh on the old Twitch other than uh you know game night and and, and join other people's stuff? Yeah, so um, the two main things that I'm doing uh, right now on my live streams, and and honestly, like this is this was the week for me in terms of uh, content uh, because I do uh, Battle Royale Wednesday on Wednesdays at 11:30 p.m. Eastern, so it's it's really late at night. I I probably in, am in the future going to be changing the time on that because we do get a lot of people that play that late, but. Um, but yeah, no, it's it, it, it schedules are are interesting. And um, and that comes back from when I was working um, when I was working an actual like day job. Um, uh, it was the only time that I could guarantee that I could be on at. And so that's why I stuck with that time. Um, so yeah, it, it is very late. And I have heard a lot of people say like, oh, I would totally be there if it weren't for the fact that it was so late. So, mm. so yeah, I'm definitely looking into it more. But aside from that, uh, Battle Royale Wednesday, uh, is, um, typically where we, uh, play Fortnite, but it's also, but it's not just Fortnite. We've all, we've looked at other, um, Battle Royale games. We played, um, Apex Legends. We played, um, uh, Realm Royale when it was popular. Um, that's a that was a sad story. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, so it's not just Fortnite. It is the majority of what we play. Um, and uh, and in terms of uh, Fortnite this week, man, I don't know. Have did you hear the news about uh, the event that happened on Sunday? Yeah, it went down. Uh, we we talked about it on uh, on uh, IQMZ Tech on Monday. Um, mm -hmm. Fortnite went down. There's a black hole. A whole bunch of memes about people watching their characters fall into a black hole, and then they deleted a lot of the, the like most of the tweets and the 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 Trello for bugs and everything else. Like they kind of made it look like the entire game just got sucked into itself. And then yeah. Tuesday came along and boop, boop, there it is, episode two, yay! Yeah, new map, I gotta... everybody, new map. <laughs> yeah, well, and and that was the thing that pissed me off was the fact that. I, uh, I, I actually streamed the event on Sunday and if you want, it's, it's on my Twitch uh, page. You can go back and look at it. And what the rumors were saying was, uh, that the game would shut down and it'd be down for like two or three hours. And then the new season, uh, would start right then and there on Sunday night. Right. What instead happened was we were definitely sitting around for five hours, just looking at a fucking black hole and I'm not salty. You're salty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I gotta say though, like, um, I have, uh, gotten a chance to play the new, um, the new Fortnite that came out and like the graphics look incredible and, you know, it, it, it very much, uh, feels like they are trying to go back to, um, back to basics. Cause, um, I know with the quiz we were playing, there's a lot of like items and stuff, and they've gotten rid of a lot of them um, just in favor of the classic, you know, sh you know, you got your your standard guns and your shields and your um, and your uh, health. And that's pretty much it. Um, and so I think it's I think it's a good um, direction that they are um, that they're going in. And a lot of the pro players are saying that, too. So nice. And nice. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> And so that and so Fortnite had a big brand new thing this week. But then uh, the thing that came out today, like we mentioned earlier with Jackbox uh, Party Pack 6 coming out, I mean, like just you, you couldn't have asked for a better week content wise for me because that's those are the two main games on my um, on my page. And it's like, there you go. 
Nice. <laughs> There's your yep. content for the week. <laughs> yep. Uh, but uh, I'm really excited to uh, play Party Pack 6. That is going to be a lot of fun. I will say that I've been playing Division 2 quite a bit lately, and I just hit 500, which is like the maximum gear score. So now I can finally get to some of the end game content. And it's... They just added Episode 2 earlier this week as well, or Episode 6, or I don't... I think it's Episode 2, Title Update 6. I don't know. They they do shit weird over there. But they... It's now more like... here's Here's a huge area. There's three areas for you to go into and each of those areas has three random missions and each of those missions has three goals each so you have to beat all three wings of each of the three buildings to get to the final prize and i did it all on i think it was sunday night i just got lucky and had people that kept coming in the group and getting it done it took me about six hours i got the final prize it was a lot of fun and it, the 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 little quests and stuff the area is dynamic so you can kind of access the whole building from the beginning but it points you in a different direction it was a blast i really enjoyed it and by the way division two is free this week if you go to uplay uh it's free this week to play and then if you buy it uh, at the end of your trial it's 75 percent off i'm guessing that means that there's not en- enough people playing it but it's definitely <laughs> if you're if you're if you like loot shooters um, it's a hell of a game and you can find me on there at Ethan Kane 77 is my you play name or whatever. So. All right. No, that's, right. uh, that's awesome. Um, I always love when, uh, when games, uh, come out with like those free to play, uh, times, um, cause it kind of gives you a, a, a good taste of the game. Mm-hmm. And, and honestly too, um, I think uh, Fortnite has a lot to, uh, I mean, not a whole lot. I mean, I'm sure they're, they've been doing this for a while, but um, with Fortnite being absolutely free, like if if you want to, like you can play Fortnite for literally $0 and never buy any of the virtual um, skins in game. And, and honestly, like I think, um, I think a lot of uh, games are going to start heading that direction in the future. I really do because especially with loot crates getting like so much backlash. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I just, I think this is the way forward and, um, Epic games, uh, uh, acquired the developers of rocket league. And that was one of the things that they did after acquiring rocket league was they got rid of loot boxes entirely, Mm -hmm. which I think is amazing. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Especially when you have a, a teenage son who's buying a bunch of damn boxes, trying to get the one specific paint scheme that he wants. (laughs) Because <laughs> all his friends already yep. have it, it's like, dude, you're not. It's it, you're you're just blowing money on nothing. Like it just makes it to where it doesn't exist anymore. The money that you had no longer exists. Yeah. yeah. So absolutely. Oh, uh, whatever. Um. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, it's about that time. Uh, where can people find you when uh, when they want to reach out to you and partake in these games and such with you? Yeah, so uh, we, uh, we mentioned already, but uh, twitch.tv slash wscott is one. If you want to uh, follow me on Twitch, uh, that is where I stream every Wednesday and Friday, uh, and it's always a good time. Uh, you can follow uh, uh, the Twitter, that is at DC Game Night. Uh, that's kind of just like the show uh, Twitter account um, for all the streams that I do. And if you want to follow me um, personally, that is uh, at wscott is one. I also want to put a uh, a plug out for a uh, for a brand new podcast actually that I've been doing. Uh, you know, I said I mentioned that I was in kind of content mode uh, this week, uh, and this was also a big week for me because um, because I got um, I just released this podcast. Uh, we did our first episode on Saturday, um, and uh, and it's called um, All Eyes Are on You. And the premise of this essentially is it is a uh, Big Brother podcast. So if you're familiar with uh, Big Brother, the reality television show, um, we basically um, just cover that um, TV show. It's kind of like a fan cast, if you will. And um, and I actually have a fellow uh, Diamond Clubber uh, along as my co-host. Uh, if you got if you guys know uh, Jackie Hearn, uh, she is uh, amazing. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, and so. And she oh, loves yeah. doing TV show podcasts. Yeah, absolutely. No, and and it was a great fit because 
I've been wanting to do a podcast for years and, um, and I'm, I'm so glad that I was able to find it with an avenue that I really love. And, um, and I just, I really love big brother, especially because it's different than, you know, survivor and, um, amazing race where it's not just about being a physical competitor. It's also the mental and social game that you have to play. And that's what I really enjoy about it is it's not just a big muscle competition. You know mm. what I mean? So, um, so if you want to, uh, uh, follow the show, it is all eyes are on you dot show is the website. If you want to do that. And, uh, we are on most major podcatchers. We just got approved to Apple podcasts on Tuesday night. Uh, so that is now we're now in iTunes, uh, but we're also on Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, most of the major podcatchers. So if you want to uh, check that out as well. And then if you want to support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash W Scott is one. Awesome. How about you, Kent? Yeah, I'm RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. Uh, that's the most important thing. <laughs> You did get to do the first beer review, right? Uh, on on Untapped. Oh yes, yes. So, so Justin and I were sitting in the bar tasting Casey's new brews and adding them to Untapped as we were trying them. Um, so yeah, check that out. Um, I am Del Noche on Untapped. So check me out over there. Uh, add me as a friend, and you can also look up. Uh, Broken Throne Brewing, and you'll see the beers that Casey has come out with so far. Hell yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane, and stay tuned if you're a patron because I have a special story about a fish for patrons only right after the credits. Ooh. You can find I'll the show be- on Twitter at Ritual Misery, and you can check out all the links that we provide and everything else, show notes, all that other stuff at ritualmisery.com. Hell yeah, man. Join our Discord at bit.ly slash RMP Discord. And we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. And thank you for listening. For Kent, for D- for Willie, I keep wanting to call you W. Scott as one. <laughs> and for me, and for you, it's been your Ritual Misery Podcast. So yeah. What are we going to do with ourselves? <laughs> I don't even know. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y